Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. In the previous video, we have already discussed about the structure of HIV. Now let's discuss about the mode of transmission. At first, I would like to ask you some questions. First of all, why HIV is not transmitted through saliva? And why HIV is not transmitted by mosquito bite? Okay. And third one is why homosexual couples are more prone to HIV infection? And last one is why STD or sexually transmitted disease increase the risk of having HIV infection? Okay. Let's discuss about that. Most often, HIV is transmitted by contact with three types of body fluid. First is blood, second is sexual or genital fluid uh, such as semen and vaginal fluid and third one is breast milk. But before that, they must come in contact with the broken skin or mucous membrane or directly into the bloodstream. Here I would like to mention that still now there is no clear evidence that HIV is transmitted through saliva. One reason is saliva contains various endogenous antiviral factors among them HIV specific IgA or immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M is important. But most importantly the presence of SLPI or secretory leukocyte protease inhibitor which is very important for inhibition of HIV. Another important point is submandibular gland secretion decrease the HIV infectivity or even destroy it effectively. It simply detach the GP120 molecule from the GP41 molecule or the virus envelope. Now let's divide the discussion in some parts. First of all sexual transmission. It is the most common mode of transmission due to unprotected vaginal sex, anal sex or even oral sex. I just want to remind you that HIV can be transmitted by even casual contact of genital fluid with the mucous membrane. But in terms of actual sexual activities, unprotected anal sex by either a man or a woman is the highest risk sexual behavior. And unprotected vaginal sex is the second highest risk sexual behavior. But it is the most frequent mode of transmission. Here I would like to mention that the rectal mucous membrane is very thin and fragile than vaginal mucous membrane. So chances of traumatic tumor is more during unprotected anal sex. That's why homosexual men have the highest risk of HIV transmission. Another reason is readily accessible CD4 positive cells which present just beneath the rectal mucosa. People who already have STD are prone to HIV infection because of the ulcerated genital mucosa which helps the virus to enter deep into the tissue. Several studies suggest that the treating of other STDs and other genital syndrome may help to prevent the transmission of HIV. Second most common mode of transmission is through infected blood. Sometimes it is due to contaminated needle sharing by IV drug users or due to accidental needle prick. Second one is more common in health workers. Another is infected blood transfusion which is more common in developing countries. Transfusion of whole blood, packed red blood cells, platelets, leukocytes and plasma are all potential carrier of HIV infection. In contrast, hyperimmune gamma globulin, hepatitis B vaccine and RH immunoglobulin do not carry HIV. The procedure involved in processing these products either inactivate or remove the virus. Now next mode of transmission is HIV infected mom to her baby which is also called vertical transmission. 90% of the HIV kids got their infection during birth. But nowadays, the use of antiretrovirus medications reduce the risk of transmission. Here you can see 
25 to 30 percent transmission when mom is without medication and 1 to 2 percent risk when mom is with medication so it is almost 20 fold reduction of hiv transmission last one is breast milk 12 20 percent cases of transmission is via breast milk maybe it is because of delicate gastric mucosal layer in newborn baby okay now i would like to mention some ways you can't get infected like sharing plates during eating sharing public toilets because it is not transmitted through saliva tear sweat urine feces or even aerosol now lastly let me explain why it is not transmitted by mosquito bite here you can see the mouth part of mosquito is actually composed of six parts four of these are used to pierce the skin and other two parts are composed of two tubes one of the tubes sends saliva into the host and other sends blood up to the mosquito so only saliva is injected into human when a mosquito bites and then HIV positive blood that the mosquito may have previously ingested is never transmitted to other humans that's the reason and there is a second reason also which is HIV is unable to replicate within the mosquito gut because of the absence of CD4 positive cells HIV particles are therefore digested by the mosquito and completely destroyed that's all for today thank you for listening and please don't forget to subscribe thank you